Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis here in early July. It's actually a couple days after the 4th of July, which of course is Independence Day here in the United States. And uh, I took the rest of the week off because I'm actually going to drive over to the Houston Society today and, and lecture to them uh, about uh, bifoliate cattleyas. So I figured, you know, take a Thursday off to go there. Friday I got to drive back. Tuesday I already have off. Might as well just take Wednesday off. So just kind of hanging out around the house, um, doing fun things around town and, and just not doing anything super vacation-y, but also not working, which is great. So today's video is filmed on a wonderfully overcast day, which is all too rare in this part of the country during uh, the heat of summer. Uh, so today's topic is not super flashy. Uh, I don't have any flowers to show you, although I do actually have an Ancelia Africana that's opening up kind of in a weird time. And I'll show that to you probably in a couple days when more blooms open. But I want to talk today about sun damage. So here in Texas, as you can imagine, we have tons of sun, tons of heat, and damaged leaves are fairly common. But it doesn't have to be here in Texas to get sun damage. You can be in New England or in, in wherever. Wherever there's sunshine, you can have sun damage if your plant is not accustomed to those conditions. So I want to show you a couple examples of sun stress, sun damage, quick sun damage, slow sun damage, uh, all kinds of things. So that, that's why I say it's not a super exciting topic, but it, it could be informative. So uh, I have some unfortunate subjects there over there on the table behind me, and apparently the wind knocked over that sort of podium, but uh, let's get the camera turned around and check out some examples of sun damage sunburn and sun stress. So I've got a range of orchids on this table, some low light lovers and some very high light lovers, all of which can and do get burned. Uh, but what I want to do actually is start off with the Phalaenopsis. I have two here on the table, uh, both showing sun stress, but not quite sun burn. So let's start off with the least damaged. This is a Phalaenopsis gigabell. I got this from Michael McCarthy. Uh, and it is a huge, huge, beautiful plant and is doing very well, uh, despite me highlighting it on my sun stress video. So this is, is a cross that prefers higher light than a lot of other Phalaenopsis. So uh, as someone who's just sort of getting into Phalaenopsis, the summer blooming Phalaenopsis, in the past couple of years, I figured I would really, what I like to do is kind of stress my plants and figure out what their sort of stress points are and then, then that way that helps me approach those stress points to maximize blooming and maximize growth without going over it. But in order to figure out what the stress points are, I have to stress the plants. So I have these two growing next to each other. Uh, like I said, this is Gigabell. This is um, Gigantea by Bellina and uh, this is Tetraspis both growing outside under shade, uh, actually right next to each other. So you can see that the higher light enjoying uh, Gigabell is doing better than the Tetraspis. But you can see that there is sun stress here. So this is, this is getting up to the point where um, the leaves are not damaged quite yet. Uh, and I've added additional shade to cover both of these plants. But I wanted to see how much extra light uh, this species or excuse me this cross actually enjoys and it turns out it's quite a bit uh, this is about the same amount of light that my Cattleya nobiliores would get so that that's an example of of how much light they're getting um, and so this light yellow on the top of the leaves here is indicative of sun stress but not sunburn this is a little bit of sunburn that happened uh, accidentally actually so rather than this which is an experiment that I've been running this was the leaf was sticking out of the shade cloth and it got burnt I think that the wind actually blew it back and you can see some hard water stains here on the plant so now I know that this one really truly does enjoy higher light levels than other fowls this is the tetraspis that's growing right next to this gigabell and is clearly much more sun damaged than than the its larger cousin over here. So this I say that this is sun stress because these yellow patches will recover. 
I say this is sun damaged because these really bright yellow ones will not recover. So these will eventually turn brown uh, and, and not be useful to the plant. But the areas around, so some of these smaller yellow spots will turn green again. This yellow spot here will probably not turn green again. I think the chlorophyll in there is all toast. But you can see the parts of the leaf that were covered were not sun stressed. So this is a combination of sun stress, like here, these sort of lighter yellow spots, sun damage, these these yellow spots that are that have, have lost their chlorophyll, and you can see they're bumpy. So these parts of the leaf are actually dead. But this really isn't enough to kill the plant. Um, you know, you can see that it still has good leaves, it's still able to create new leaves here, so, uh, and it's actually blooming. Oops, as you can see here. So, you know, the, the plant is doing okay. It's not great. This is not what you want to achieve, but now I've sort of tortured the plant to the point where I know what its boundaries are. In fact, I probably let this one go too long, right? I, I should have added, I should have added a, an, an additional shade cloth over these probably a week or two ago, but it took a good month of increasing temperatures and heat for both of these plants to reach this level. Uh, and temperatures have actually backed off. We had high temperatures uh, well above 105 here, and the temperatures have, have backed off to only 100, and it's, actually, it's amazing how cool 95 degrees feels compared to 105 degrees. But that said, uh, this one will recover. The other Phalaenopsis, you know, this Gigabell will recover, and the ones that are back underneath the shade cloth will do just fine as well. So these are these are the low light examples of of sun stress and I want to show you some some sunburns and sun stress on plants that really appreciate high levels of light. Hey if you found this video helpful please uh, click this little button down here on the bottom right and uh, don't feel obligated to but if you feel like this was worth a dollar or two please uh, please click that and add a dollar or two. Um, that will really go a long way to me helping to get a greenhouse right over here, as well as head over to Brazil for an orchid trip in 2024. So all of your orchid donations will go to orchid causes uh, for which I can make additional videos. And as always, thank you very much. So let's start with this Rinkalalia Glauca. Let's see, you can see this is an awarded one. Red heart, got an HCC, beautiful flowers, probably a polyploid. But you can see where, um, you know, this got sun stressed uh, a while back, actually. This happened, I don't know, a couple months ago uh, by accident. But again, you can see that the chlorophyll has been removed from this location. It's still occurring in this part of the leaf, so it's still, the leaf is okay. And if we come around to the back side of the leaf, we can see that there is still chlorophyll in the part of the really sun damaged leaf. So I don't need to cut this off. I mean, I wouldn't need to cut this off anyway, but this part of the leaf is still useful. It is still producing food for the plant. So I can leave it there, even if it is a little unsightly. So high light plants, high light loving plants, I should say, like Rinkalalia can certainly get burned. Another example of sunburn on a light-loving plant is here with this catacetum. So you can see, so if this type of a burn occurred farther down the leaf or underneath the shaded section, you know, you'd start to wonder if that actually was sunburn. But the fact that this is, this is the part that's going to be facing the sun, it's facing directly up. Same with this part here, which got scorched very quickly. Uh, you can tell that this is sun damage, and this was this one was probably a slower sun damage. As you can see, it's you know the leaf is still intact. There are red spots, um, but it's it's sun damage surrounded by sun stress. This is just straight up sun scorch, right? So this this happened probably in a couple of hours. This type of damage occurred probably in a couple hours to over the course of a couple days. So at the hottest, brightest part of each day, this was getting damaged. This got damaged very quickly. All the chlorophyll quickly died and was removed and basically bleached out. In fact, it's to the point where 
you can see my finger through some of these threads. In fact, it's, it's pretty easy to pull, pull this apart. So that can happen on both thick-leaved plants as well as thin-leaved plants. Uh, I have a Cattleya ludemanniana over here, and both of these leaves are sticking out the side of my shade cloth. I just don't have more room to push this back under. So if I lose the tips of these sort of older back bulbs, I don't care. I'm not too worried about it. So I'm not doing anything to prevent damage on these these plants, on these leaves, I should say, at all. This one, this catacetum, I moved into a little better position within the shade cloth so that it's not getting burnt anymore. This one can stay as it is. Now this, on its side here, is a sort of podium, and it is growing over there with no shade cloth, right? Uh, I've mentioned this in other videos. This is facing directly west, so as the sun travels across the sky, that fence provides shade at about 2.30 to 3 o'clock, uh, complete shade to the plants as, as the sun is, is high in the sky and starts dipping behind that tree there. Uh, so my really bright, loving plants, uh, the Certipodiums, I have uh, Neobenthamia gracilis, which is actually renamed uh, Polystachia neobenthamia, is sort of a reed-looking one over there, and then all of my milkweeds uh, are growing in there. I've got a, a bunch of those species. So, um, But this is really the only sun-damaged one of my Certipodiums. So you can see that it has sun stress here with the yellow. You can see sun damage with here um, on the sort of orange, where the yellow is elevated to an orange color. And then you, you can see straight up sun burn on these parts of the leaves. And of course, these are the parts of the leaves that are facing directly towards the sky at all times of the day. And then as, as you can see, there's, there's varying levels of sun shade, excuse me, sun stress, sun damage, and just sun burn. All in the same plant. Now this is one that I'm not going to do anything with. It can burn all summer long for all I care, not because I don't like it, because that's what the plant seems to be just fine handling. It'll drop all these leaves in the fall anyway. I want this one to grow as large and robust as it can, and that includes pushing its light levels. And to be honest, I really don't have space under shade cloth to sort of hide this one from the sun that it really needs. You know, this would be something like adding maybe like 10% shade cloth uh, to remove 10% of the sunlight from hitting it. And that would be enough. And I'm just not going to spend the money on one single plant or even a couple other plants, uh, which are all doing fine, by the way. It's really only this species that's that's a little scorched. And it is, uh, this is St. Ledgerianum. One of my, this is the last St. Ledgerianum that I have. The other one had virus, so I tossed it. That said, that's, that's all that I've got for you today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If this was useful, let me know. I, I'm curious to hear folks who have experienced sun damage and what they've done to, to prevent such things from happening in the future. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye.